Greetings, LEGO fans. Released in time for Star Wars Episode Nine. LEGO has come up with yet another Millennium Falcon set. This is kit number 75257, and it has 1,351 pieces. I'm quite curious to see what differentiates this one from other Millennium Falcon kits that have released over the years, because there have been many of them. I have some of them. You may have seen. But the only way to find out is really to build it and see, uh, see how it looks. So without further ado, let's open the box and see what's inside.
Now that this Millennium Falcon is all built out, I can see a variety of similarities between some of the other ones I've done, plus a lot of unique features that make this one stand out. In shape and size, this one is actually very similar to the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon. But just because the shape is about the same, doesn't mean the construction was. There was actually quite a bit of difference in how this one is put together. And a lot of the details within are unique to this one. Starting with the cockpit, this one's a little cozier than the one in the actual Millennium Falcon, as you can just barely squeeze too many figures in there. Pulling off the cockpit glass, you can see that there's actually room for the little DO droid right behind the driver. The front end obviously has that classic Millennium Falcon shape to it. And like the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon, this one also has some blasters facing forward, but on this one, the triggers are a little more hidden. If you look inside the two front holes, you can see the triggers for the two main cannons, which are well hidden and don't show up too prominently in the design. Over on the top, we've got the gunner's quad laser and the classic round satellite dish, as opposed to the square one that we saw in episode 7 and 8. And making our way to the back of the ship, we've got those six air vents that are prominently displayed and those big blue thrusters in the back that the Millennium Falcon is so well known for. Which brings us to the interior scenes, of which this model is not lacking. In the back left corner, we have the kitchen, with a range, a pan sitting atop that, a little table to sit at with a mug, and a chair so you can comfortably eat your meal. And over on the right side, we've got a pair of beds for our minifigures to have a little downtime. And just in front of that, we have the only room in the ship that rivals the cockpit for airtime in the movies. Over on the left, we have the little command center with swivel chair. And on the right side, we've got that comfy three-person couch with the iconic hollow chess game. And for the extra features, next to the kitchen, we have the little ramp that lowers so your minifigures can get in and out. And between the kitchen and the sleeping area, there's a hidden compartment for all those contraband Lego bricks that you may want to smuggle. Finally, in the center of the ship, there's a compartment where you can lay out your two gunners. Yes, two gunners, because like the real Millennium Falcon, this one also has a belly turret. With the ship all covered, we come to the minifigures, of which this kit is plentiful. Starting off, we have Lando, Chewie, Finn, and Bulio. And for the droids, we have R2-D2, Dio, and C-3PO. Despite its size, like the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon, this one's really quite sturdy. It's easy to grip it from a variety of locations, and it feels solid in your hands as you whip it around. I would definitely say that this one was intended more for play than for display, but that's not to say this one wouldn't look good on your shelf. And that wraps it up for my review of this kit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you'd like to stay informed of our latest releases, please subscribe. And I hope to see you back here next week for the next release.